This is um, LINAC based IMRT VMAT commissioning and QA program development. And we have uh, Grace Kim from uh, University of California, San Diego, talking on uh, commissioning, and uh, Dao Liang Zhao from Swedish Medical Center in, uh, in Seattle that's going to talk about uh, patient uh, specific uh, QA. Um, and what I'd like to do is uh, hold our questions until the end. Um, both speakers, uh, for continuity purposes, will be uh, talking about uh, different uh, technologies that they may not be themselves using. So we'd like to hold the questions to the end of the presentation, and then both speakers would uh, be able to, uh, to address uh, questions in their area of expertise. So uh, I'd like to begin with Grace on uh, the commissioning aspects of, of uh, IMRT and VMAT. Good morning. My name is Grace Kim. Um, I'm focused on the, uh, the commissioning part of VMAT. So, um, so um, let's talk about the why it's so important of commissioning of the uh, your IMRT or VMAT technique. It's according to the RPC credentialing, you can see the uh, those uh, major the factor why they do have uh, some errors. Is uh, uh, those three factors what I uh, the mark. Is incorrect alpha factors, the percentage substance, or inadequate modeling of the uh, penumbra of the MRC, and inadequate QA of MRC leaf collimator is the uh, main um, the reason why they do have a fail on the, their credentialing. So you you can see what is so important of your commissioning uh, procedure. So let's talk about the commissioning has the, the, those three part big part is the first. Thing is a comprehensive measurement of your decimetric uh, parameters, and the second part is a validate your machine performance in terms of general performance and or the uh, BMAT uh, and BMAT uh, performance or rapid arc performance, and finally end-to-end -end test. So, as a comprehensive measurement, it is good guideline from the I, um, AAPM is a TG106. The, uh, for the photon beams, there are minimum requirements for the PDD and profiles for the various depths and the wedge fields. Also, uh, it requires uh, data related to the MRC, the, such as the inter intra leakage and perambra triangle effect, and the head and head scatter and the torus scatter uh, tray and the wedge factors. So before we start our commissioning, the manufacturer will give us the kind of a, um, acceptance test, demonstrate us this kind of acceptance test as a dynamic treatment. And this is a one example of the uh, acceptance test. It's as a um, um, arc dynamic functionality, there is a check of interlocks and then leaf speed and effective MU per degrees and the gantry position and then um, MU errors. Also, as a sliding window, MRT technique is uh, they will show um, the uh, interlocks and then MRC position accuracy within 0.15 cm. So once we accept our machine, and we need to measure the, some dosimetric data, especially for the VMAT or MRT, is very crucial with the uh, MRC related data. So um, it depends on your treatment planning system. You might need average transmission, or you might need an under, you know, leaf, which is intra-transmission factors. Um, the right side of the screen is the uh, you can have an open field and then closed MNC field. You can measure the uh, transmission factors. If you want to measure the intra-transmission factors, you might need a very small detectors. It's like a SRS diode or well-calibrated film or EPIT system to you know take the measurement. And then the um, dynamic leaf gap, um, this is a little tricky part. So what we used for our test is uh, we made a sweeping MRC plans with the different sweeping gaps. So for example, five millimeter, uh, 10 millimeter, 20, and uh, 50 millimeters, and then we sweep the uh, uh, MRCs. And the right side of the graphs is the uh, what we put on our planning system to simulate the reference um, the numbers. So we compare with the uh, your um, planning value versus your chamber measurement. Then you can find what is the minimize your errors from the you know those the uh, uh, end of your MRC. 
So uh, move forward to the VMAC commissioning. In terms of variant machine, you have a good reference. Everybody, you know, side about this paper. So this paper basically give you the MRC movement and the stability during the entire gantry rotation idea and the stability with the maximum and minimum MU per degree and the delivery dose consistently during the gantry rotation. So um, if you are the very unusual, you might you know, visit the website or have you know, those uh, um, test file with the dynamic MLC motion. So as a test, 0 0.1 is a DMRC dosimetry in different gantry angles. So you can either use an ion chamber measurement in the central part of the, your you know, field, or you can use EPID or films. So you can analyze each gantry angle doesn't give you any difference in terms of those wise. The second test is a thick fence on the stationary gantry angles. So you can use um, um, if you use APID, you can profile and analyze all the numbers, and then this is a certain software, so you can see the, uh, what is the accuracy of your MRC position. So uh, on the right side of the uh, window is the uh, positioning uh, tolerance is uh, plus minus one millimeter. So it, the green means is passed, each MLC is passed for the uh, plus minus one millimeter test. Second one is the, during the rapid arc, you have a, a picket fence, same test. So there you can see the still plus minus one percent tolerance is passed for the every um, leaf. So next one is uh, what if you introduce some certain intentional errors. So this plant has the uh, uh, 0 0.5 millimeter errors introduced. So you can clearly, actually in the, uh, um, the film or if the image show you, you know, demonstrate the errors easily. But if you analyze with some certain, you know, software or certain way, you can visually, it is fail, actually, those the, um, error position. This is the tolerance as the plus minus 0.5 um, millimeter right now. So next test is uh, there is a combination, seven combination for uh, dose rate and gantry, uh, uh, gantry angles, gantry speed. So as has the seven strip, we normalize to the open field. So you can see the blue is the open field and normalize to the uh, red profile is you, what you have uh, for the seven combination. So you can see the, uh, uh, how it is different from uh, deviate from your what you're expecting. So the, our tolerance was a 2%. So it passed all the uh, seven uh, combination. Next one is the uh, leap speed. Actually, leap speed and the dose rate change together. So you can see the four combination compared to your open field give you the um, two person within two percent pass or the uh, four strips. Next one is uh, electron machine. If you are the uh, electron users, these two paper might be interesting. The first one is the. Uh, um, is kind of one complex plan with the uh, lots of variables, and then you separate all the accuracy. And the second one, second paper is more likely CC Link's paper plus like a, the reverser test kind of idea. So let me more um, approach the first one because second one is kind of the same idea. So the first paper is um, try to test with the beam flattening symmetry and the MRC leap calibration and the sliding window dose and the rotation accuracy and the beam interruption and the termination. So the, uh, the, this pattern is the, from the space test center, yes. The special VMAP plan with the uh, specific MRC leap motion patterns and the dose rate variations develop for checking three major variables. So gantry is continuously uh, rotate while the uh, MLC lip moving. And then dose rate also varies during the gantry rotation and the measurement done on the matrix system on the Q phantoms. And then the sampling size was 0.1 seconds. So this is the theoretical dose distribution 
calculate using the uh, pinnacle systems. So this calculation was done with the one degree gantry spacing. So you can see the real time, the data sampling on the right side of the plotting. So how we check the variables in this measurement? First thing is the MRC lip motion could um, the check by the put projection position of the tip of the each MRC leaf on matrix device and they use the uh, determine the MRC leaf motion accuracy. And the second one is a gantry angle. You can check what the projection width of the 1cm gap between the MRC leaves on the metric system. And the dose rate, is, because the metric system is absolute dose, you can, um, you can convert your apps those with the sampling time to uh, those rate terms. So this measurement is a real actual measurement with a real time metric system is interpolate into the one millimeter dose grid using the cubic spline the uh, interpolate method. So the overall the result of the uh, standard deviation gauge angle was about one degree with the maximum error was 2.6, and the standard deviation of the lip position error was 1.1, and the maximum was the 3.1 millimeter on the right side plot. In terms of dose rate, as uh, the 2.7 mu per minute, or 3.2 percent on the relative mode. So let's move forward to the end-to-end uh, -end test. Once you check your machine's performance for you know, basic MLC testing, VMAT testing kind of thing, and then you want to test in real condition. So it is good recommendation by the TG119 is the uh, dosimetry validation is define your you know, test target structure and the mock clinical cases and create uh, your inverse plan and the measure those with the chamber film or other devices and evaluate the dose per MU in gradient, low gradient area and evaluate isocyte in many different planes. So TG119 has the certain requirement what kind of a device or what kind of a method you need to use. So that in terms of phantom, you need to have those phantom permit the point measurement uh, with the uh, plane dose measurement. For example, film, you can put it in the film. Also consistent with the uh, slabs, water equivalent to plastic, torque thickness should be more than you know, 15 cm. And the center will be uh, 7.5 to 10 cm below the interior surface. And then um, also you can possibly, you can fill them and chamber together so you can normalize uh, your film in terms of your absolute on the, your ion chamber. So the lower three images are kind of example as uh, uh, your phantom. The first one is a homogeneous and second one is a heterogeneous phantom. Ion chamber. Um, the guideline recommend to use the uh, smaller than uh, farmer type chamber. So in terms of your digit display on your electrometer or accuracy wise, they don't, not necessarily, in, in practically, uh, you don't want to use the pinpoint or very, very small chamber because it's going to give you only two or three digits. At end up. So not farmer chamber because the uh, high gradient of the, the nature of the IMRT plane is usually involved high gradient and or very small homogeneous area. So um, recommendation is 0.1 to 5 cc around that volume and uh, you can use the conversion factor for convert your chamber reading versus to your uh, absolute dose. The reason why they recommend to use those conversion factor is you can reduce the effect of daily linear output variations and the difference between the water versus your phantom too. So as a composite film, so if uh, there's two ways to you can use the uh, plain dose information as a composite or as a per field. So composite film, at least the one coronal plane 
should be irradiated on the phantom. And again, my criteria is 3% dose difference and a 3 millimeter uh, distancer um, agreement. So you can normalize your dose uh, information to your absolute chamber measurement. So ROI usually is really depends on how you implement. So the, uh, the software give you the option, you can open whole area or you can apply the 10% threshold or you can apply the aperture of the, your beam. So per field measurement, you can use the device film, EDR2, GAF chromic, right, the detector array, the map geometric 2D as a, if you want to really check the arc plans and then you want to use the arc or data for kind of uh, semi 3D um, checking system. The gamma criteria on or ROI system is the same as the uh, composite uh, measurement system. So this is an example of um, our the center has the um, those end-to-end -end test examples. So we have scanned our phantom in you know, solid water or homogeneous. IMRT phantom, heterogeneous IMRT phantom, and then make the plans in different geometry. So uh, geometry 10 and 11 is for the IMRT or VMAT test. So we made uh, those uh, um, different PTV target and make an inverse plan, and, and you know, we deliver on our machine and compare with the, our, what we expect. So evaluation is point those comparison, which is with the ion chamber, and the 2D those comparison film or EP images is actually porodosmetry. And the porodosmetry and the uh, secondary calculation should be commissioned too. This is one example of the uh, uh, IMRT end to end test. It's a, with the homogeneous IMRT phantom. It's a C shape. You can uh, use the absolute. Uh, those at the ice center, and then you can compare with this film measurement. Three and three, three percent dose and three millimeter we applied for. And this is a heterogeneous phantom, and same thing, we apply the uh, three and three categories. So, as I end to test, is how you uh, evaluate your results. What is the satisfied, what is the unsatisfied results? So in high dose and low gradient lesion, you expect to have a 2 to 4 percent um, dose difference with the chamber. That is a reasonable numbers. And um, ice dose is a little bit more trickier to say, but the, the TG119 recommend to use the 50 percent to 90 percent line um, should be 2 or 4 millimeter agreement. So DG119 give you the, some kind of mock case, is head and neck, prostate, spine. So you can use those mock tests or you can design your end-to-end uh, -end test yourself. Uh, of course, IMRT and VMAP might be the, uh, you know, another option to add on your end-to-end -end test. But TG119 and test has a certain um, limitation. They mentioned under their paper, it says the, uh, they didn't look um, through the whole um, complicated case, what um, actually uh, it could happen under local heart practice. Is, uh, for example, large pelvic uh, lesions or complex head and neck case. And then uh, there are 10 centers involved for the, those comparisons, so it's, it might not enough com contributors. And the gamma evaluation is uh, r really depends on the high, highly depends on the implementation. So if you really um, apply the big ROI or, you know, the different you know, criteria you apply, you might get the 100% all the time, but it's not necessarily that's the uh, mm -hmm. um, true ground truth. So, um, and uh, even though they saw there's some um, failure, they didn't specify what kind of reason is involved in these fails. That's the, that was a limitation. So this is good reference for your uh, commissioning for IMRT and VMAT, you know, rapid arc part. 
and thank you very much.